Don't you like those colors? How beautiful is the morning? I'm going to pop you here for a second to just turn off the lights here in the house. So bear with me, but I let you look out here at this beautiful light. So what you think of all this color? And that's just the reflection on the water. And then we go up a little higher and we have the real deal. Today is the Sunday of the Word of God. And every Sunday we hear the Word of God. Every day we hear the Word of God. But today is a special day devoted to thinking about the Word of God. Celebrating the Word of God, pondering the impact of the Word of God in our lives. Just like we see so many reflections of light, we see so much impact of the Word of God in our lives. And today we have an opening story of Jonah and the very first uh, sounds we hear from this reading is the Word of the Lord came to Jonah. And some people would be thinking, well, wouldn't I love the word of the Lord came to me? Well, guess what? It's coming to you all the time. <laughs> and not from preachers. Let there be light. That's the word of God. And it came to you this morning through all this light. Let there be you. And you exist because of God's creative word. Getting breakfast. Sorry. Let there be you. But then there's also all of the scriptures. All of creation, all of the scriptures. And then there's your conscience. And I don't do this very often, but today I included a link for you in the notes 
for the commentary Bishop Barron gave on the readings today, particularly on Jonah. I found them very compelling, very, very beautiful, very inspiring, as Bishop Barron does. So Jonah hears the word of God, and what does he do? Well, the story tells us he ran away. Uh, if we want to go to Babylon, how do we do it? Well, Babylon is east of us. I'd say it's quite north of the sun. So maybe like over in the middle of the screen there in that direction. And you probably, if you wanted to go the easiest route, you go through Damascus from here. If you're going by land. If you're flying, it's a different story. So what did Jonah do? He went this direction to Tarshish, which is located in ancient understanding in Spain, the ends of the world. He went in the opposite direction. Well, you can kind of understand Jonah because he didn't like what God was telling him. Poor guy, you're supposed to go, like, let me put it this way right now. Let's say you're an U Ukrainian. And you look like a Ukrainian, you dress like a Ukrainian, you talk like a Ukrainian, you have an Ukrainian accent. And God speaks to you and says, go to Moscow and preach the word of God to the people in Moscow. The country that has crushed your country and destroyed so many and killed so many in your country. How many Ukrainians would be ready to volunteer for that job? And Jonah, obviously the Bible story, Jewish, and he's been sent to Nineveh, the capital of the empire that crushes them, that brought them into exile that destroyed their kingdom. Ooh, look at this, people. Look at this, look at this. Let me get you a bit more focus here. That's quite that day. I think these are, I think they're cormorants. <laughs> the black ones that land on the lake and gobble up all the little fish. You see them over here as well, heading off. They're going with a different speed and a different formation than the than the geese we see migrating. They're, I don't think they're bragging. They're just having fun around the lake here, scoping it out, see where the good fish are. Yeah, you see they're swinging up over there now as well. And there we got sunrise. And Jonah's going to the Babylonians and he's going with a big message, turn around, change your ways, convert, or you will be destroyed. It's interesting that what Jonah is asking the Ninevites to do, to convert, is exactly what God needed him to do. <laughs> Most of the time, those of us who speak God's words have to convert first have to turn to God, to turn away from worldliness. It's the core of conversion. And there's a time to convert. And some people say not yet, but eventually they give in to grace. Some people think they'll never convert because they're in the not yet phase. 
and the time is very important. Actually, to convert is really to come back to be yourself. Because often we're led in a direction by our passions, by our anger, by our emotions. And we go against what we really, truly are and want. I don't think people really want to be selfish and crush others. Want to be indifferent and ignore others. We're made for compassion. We know we are our brother's keeper. And you know, what would the world be without God's word? God's word. All the people who have changed cultures molded light illuminating minds and hearts coming out of the darkness The little reading we have today is just a true, a very, very tight summary. There's lots of other things we could say about Jonah. He didn't like that they'd convert. He wanted to see them destroyed because he had that innate hatred toward them as his enemies. He had fear and he had dislike for them. And he has to rejoice that they convert. Amazing. So we mentioned the word time. There's a time to convert. And this word crops up in both readings as well today. It, it comes in the reading of the second reading. And it comes in the, in the gospel. And in the second reading, which is from Corinthians, In chapter 7, the first letter, Paul says the time is running out. In the German translation, it says the time is short. The time is running out. You think of those times when you were going to do an exam and two weeks time, very important exam at the university or in high school. And you notice the time is running out because you had good intentions three months ago to really knuckle down and study. But there's a lot to do and the time is running out and you need to go at it. And now it's a week because there were a couple of parties in between and the time is running out. And there's a lot to get done. And so you start to focus. And especially the last two hours before the exam, some poor students cram a lot. Not the best way to study. And not the purpose why we study. We don't study for exams. But some people do. Just as you realize where I'm walking, it's just like I came walking on all this stony path here, and the stony path is no path. <laughs> now it's going to be a little smoother sailing here. I tell you, brothers and sisters, the time is running out. And just read the consequences, amazing. So the time's running out for the exam, no television, no parties. 
I'm not going over to McDonald's for a sandwich. It's the exam, it's the time is running out, I need to do it. And then I want to come back there again, but let's go on to the gospel passage and it says, Jesus is coming to the Sea of Galilee. It's Mark chapter one, first chapter, middle of the first chapter. The time, this is the time of fulfillment. The times are fulfilled. And we know from the Galatians and the Ephesians letters, it says, in the fullness of time, God sent his son. In the fullness of time. It's a marvelous word. It requires a lot of pondering. In the fullness of time, God created heaven and earth, and then he created people. And then we have that whole history of the different ages of, of humanity. And in the fullness of time, God himself became man. That's the, the context here. Now, very few people knew about it in Bethlehem, in Nazareth, who he was. And here he's at the Sea of Galilee. And it's the fullness of time. In the fullness of time. And because it's the fullness of time, repent and believe in the gospel. And I want to tie this back in again to Paul's comment in the letter to the Corinthians. And he's saying the time is short. And if you're going to buy a shawarma or a hamburger, almost eat as if you're not eating it. Buy as if you're not buying. Build up the things of this world as if you're not doing, because it's a sinking ship. They had a tremendous sense of the immediacy of God's kingdom. God's kingdom is among you, it's here. Start investing in God's kingdom, not in a sinking ship kingdom, which is what do people say? How much profit can I make? How much political power can I exert? God's kingdom. God's kingdom will last forever. Your soul will last forever. We don't know if we'll be here tomorrow. Invest in not a sinking ship. Invest in the kingdom of God. Invest your life, your time, your interest, your passion. And this word of God has impacted millions, millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of people. We have a beautiful prayer today in the psalm how much the word of God in the Psalms has impacted us teach me your ways O Lord teach me your ways and then the story in the gospel is the foot the time has come the kingdom is here repent and then he's walking along a little further and he sees there were fishermen, Simon and his brother casting their nets into the sea. Come after me and I will make you fishers of men. Then they abandoned their boats and followed him. Then he walked a little more and he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Where the bird is right now is Capernaum. And where that bird is flying right now, it's the primacy of Peter almost there that church behind it and then above it is the Mount of Beatitudes and then over the next one is the multiplication of the loaves. Thank you bird for helping us. People, God bless you. Jesus calling you. His word, God's word is reaching you. Open your heart. It's time. Lord, teach us your path. Show us the way to go.
see you later alligators god bless you